produce a functional protein, the genetic information found in the form of an mRNA, which is composed of nucleotide building blocks, must be translated into the language of proteins, which are composed of amino acids. This translation process is orchestrated by a large macromolecular ribonuclear protein machine in the cell, known as the ribosome. It uses a key adapter species known as a transfer RNA, or tRNA. tRNAs are the molecules that actually translate the nucleotide sequence into an amino acid sequence. tRNAs are bifunctional in nature, with three nucleotides poised at one end of the molecule to read the mRNA template in an anti-parallel fashion. This is referred to as the anticodon end of the tRNA. At the other end of the molecule is the acceptor end, where an activated amino acid is attached. This amino acid corresponds specifically to the identity of the codon being read. Amino acyl tRNA synthetase enzymes are responsible for catalyzing the loading of the amino acid onto the appropriate tRNA species. The fidelity of this step is extremely high, which is critical to the overall fidelity of protein synthesis. In its most basic form, during translation, the tRNAs walk along an mRNA in the 5' to 3' direction. As they move, the tRNAs sequentially recognize or decode consecutive three nucleotide codons that correspond to a given amino acid. This highly orchestrated march along the mRNA template takes place in the heart of the ribosome, facilitated at each step by portions of this machine, as well as by extracellular factors that participate in each step during the translational cycle. The ribosome has binding sites for three different tRNAs. One tRNA is always bound in the centralmost position in the ribosome and carries the growing polypeptide chain. We refer to this tRNA as the peptidyl tRNA. It's bound in the P site of the ribosome. The incoming tRNA with the new amino acid to be incorporated binds adjacent to the P site in a site referred to as the A site for amino acyl tRNA. There is a third binding site, the E or exit site, where the tRNA binds on its way out of the ribosome following the incorporation of its amino acid into the polypeptide chain. As in most processes, there is a beginning, a middle and an end. The initiation phase of translation consists of the small subunit of the ribosome working in concert with various initiation factors to identify the starting AUG methionine codon that is positioned in the P site of the ribosome. Next, the initiator tRNA engages the AUG codon and the large subunit of the ribosome joins in a catalyzed reaction. Because of the substantial differences in the mRNA structure between bacteria and eukaryotes, this process is quite different in these two systems. In bacteria, a polypurine motif in the mRNA, known as the shine dalgano motif, is found 6 to 8 nucleotides upstream of the initiator AUG. This sequence directly pairs with a polypyrimidine motif in the small ribosome subunit rRNA to position the AUG in the P site, where the initiator tRNA binds to it. In eukaryotes, the ribosome engages the 5' capped end of the mRNA and in association with a collection of initiation factors scans along the mRNA until it encounters the 5' most AUG codon. Because the initiator tRNA is part of this scanning complex, it plays a key role in finding the AUG and positioning the ribosome complex where it belongs. After initiation is complete, the ribosome is ready for iterated rounds of amino acid addition. This phase, referred to as elongation, can be broken down into three basic steps. In the first step, the ribosome must select the amino acyl tRNA that corresponds to the codon poised in the A site of the ribosome. This step is facilitated by the GTPA's elongation factor EFTU in bacteria or EEF1A in eukaryotes. Simply put, the process of tRNA selection consists of two phases. In the initial selection phase, an amino acyl tRNA in complex with EFTU can be rejected or accepted by the ribosome. Once the complex has been accepted, GTP is hydrolyzed and EFTU leaves the ribosome. A near cognate tRNA can still be rejected in a second phase, which is referred to as proofreading. In both steps, thermodynamic and kinetic mechanisms are used by the ribosome to aid in discrimination such that the system chooses, with extremely high fidelity, the cognate tRNA from the 30 or 40 tRNAs in the cell. 
Once the tRNA selection step has taken place, peptide bond formation is catalyzed in the large subunit. In this step, the growing polypeptide chain is transferred from the peptidyl tRNA to the nucleophilic amine of the A-site tRNA amino acid. This transfer extends the polypeptide chain by one amino acid. At this stage, the extended peptide is attached to the tRNA in the A-site. This whole mRNA-tRNA complex must now be repositioned in the ribosome to open up the A-site for the next incoming aminoacyl tRNA. This translocation step is catalyzed by another translational GTPase, EFG in bacteria and EEF2 in eukaryotes. The GTPase couples the chemical energy of GTP hydrolysis to mechanical motion. These core events of elongation, tRNA selection, peptide bond formation and translocation happen iteratively until the ribosome reaches a codon in the A site that signals stop. Stop codons are recognized by protein factors known as release factors that function in an analogous manner to tRNA. One end of the release factor recognizes stop codons positioned in the A site with high specificity and the other end facilitates chemistry in the active site of a large subunit. In bacteria there are two release factors, RF1 and RF2, that recognize the three stop codons UAA, UGA and UAG with overlapping specificity. In eukaryotes there is a single factor ERF1 that recognizes all three stop codons. The reaction that is catalyzed is a hydrolytic one wherein the growing polypeptide is released from the peptidyl tRNA resulting in the termination of protein synthesis. The final step in protein synthesis is referred to as recycling. This step promotes the dissociation of the large and small subunits of the ribosome and the release of the remaining mRNA and tRNA components. At this point, the small subunit is free to re-engage the initiation factors that allow it to begin again the task of identifying AUG codons to start another round of protein synthesis.